What up guys, Brick Swipe Day here with the Fusion update for Opadin Clan Father. This is the first day that the Fusion is beginning, so this should be your notice that the Fusion is available in Raid Shadow Legends. It is a fragment Fusion, not the old school one. You don't need to collect a bunch of um, rare champions or epic champions. You simply do the events, get the fragments required from all the events, get the total number of fragments, which is 100, and you can fuse this champion in the fragment Fusion portal. So let's read straight to the um, plan because that's what everybody wants to know you want to know can you complete this fusion do you have enough resources energy shards and all that do you need to complete all the events that the fusion also offers before you can get a hundred so i'll answer this question for you by doing a quick math for you i've calculated all the fragments that is required for you to complete these events if you do all the events i'm talking about spider tournament dragon tournament um, champion training tournament, fire knight tournament, ice golem tournament, classic arena one and two, then the events also champion training. You do all all of them, you end up with a total of seventy five fragments of Opadin the clan father. Now, where do the rest of the fragments come from? I skipped two events because we are looking to skip two events. We are trying to skip. The main one that are most difficult for most players not to be able to complete and that is champion chase tournament and the summon rush summon rush starts on 27th of january why champion chase starts on 21st of january these are the two events most players do not have the shards for because you might have energy yes you might have saved up um, resources yes but you might not be able to save up enough shards ready to pull and if you are free to play especially you'll find it difficult to complete these events when you don't have enough shards for the summon rush and for the champion chase tournament so how do you get the rest of these shards if you want to skip any of them by claiming first place in one of these events if you can be first place or second place you have extra five shards of upadding the clan father now that is very risky so i advise you to at least complete one of the two either summon rush or champion chase because they both offer 20 points each now if you add the 20 points from one of them let's say you did champion chase right and you add 20 points to your score you end up with 95 so now all you need is five more if you can get the five more from a first place in arena arena tournament or first place in something one of these tournaments just take first place i know it's not easy but if you cannot do it get ready to pull your shards for a summon rush get ready to save up all your mystery shards 1000 2000 whatever the points might be for that first five fragments you know they usually put it in the first row of the uh, of the summon rush events so if you can get that five from it Hopefully, they don't do 10 and 10. They make it very high milestone. They do 5 at the beginning and then put the remaining 15 at the end of the... Or they break it 5, 5, 10. We don't know how it's going to be until we see this Summon Rush event. So, prepare your time because if you do not plan well right now, you end up with 95 shards. This is a plan from Playroom to make you pull shards on Champion Chase and also pull shards on Summon Rush. But if you plan well, you'll be able to skip one of them. I'm stressing this because a lot of players made wrong calculation last time for the last fusion and they were not able to get the, the champion fragments because of they missed out on one of the events due to miscalculation. I think this is the first time Playroom is also re releasing a fragment summon calendar that looks so detailed. Usually we have to rely on third party ones created by content creators or others in the community that has an Excel sheet that shows you all the events that are going on and what you can participate in and what you should not participate in. So we are happy that they brought this one out so everybody knows what is coming, which day it's coming. And right now we have spider tournaments running, right? But check this out. If you do not want to start using your saved up energy today, don't wait till tomorrow when CVC launches. That's when you start farming the spider. We also have super rates turned on. Super rates does not count towards CVC double points, but at least you can then farm the spider and also get some um, CVC arena points. There is no um, personal rewards this time for CVC, so a lot of people will not be even um, encouraged to wait till then the spider is running for a very long time and it offers only five <laughs> only five um, fragments so imagine the spider that is running for from monday 
This is what yes, Monday up till Thursday, Fida is running. So if you want to wait for Thursday, wait until Thursday when a dragon tournament. No, not not Thursday. Where is it? I'm looking for yeah, dungeon divers. Wait for Wednesday when a dungeon diver starts. Then's when you start farming spider. That's if you can wait that long. I've already started using my free energy that I get daily for the spider. Or you can use your free energy that you get daily from the champion training event to level up your champions of course. So you can do that. But you know those energy that is currently sitting in your inbox? Don't start using it until dungeon diver starts. That's how you double dip for these events. So that's the fusion plan that I wanted to share with you guys. I'll link this if you have not seen it in game already it was shared on discord i'll link the screenshot over in the link in the description below so you can download it and have a plan if i see a better third party one that has the ability for you to type in your fragment and all that i'll also link that but i've not seen that yet so that's Opadin, the clan father a new champion barbarian that is available as a fusion now the question might be asking now is it worth it he should, should you even be going for this champion? Most people have already counted him out. They've already made judgment about him that he was not going to be a good legendary champion to go for. They've taken a break from Fragment Fusions this time. But I'll remind you that Fragment Fusion offer a total of 155 fragments. That means you might be playing the game regularly and still gain all these fragments. <laughs> So why not go for him? Because it's a lot of fragments that are available. They don't offer 120 or 110. It's a lot of fragments. And you'll be pulling your shards anyways for the next 2x that is coming up or a 10x. So you might get all these fragments along the way, except you're free to play. So I wanted to go over his skills because I've heard about a lot about him. Let me make my personal decision about whether he's a good champion or is it going to be somebody, somebody that we put straight to the vault and never use. So let's make that decision together on his a1 he attacks one enemy two times that's good each hit has a 50 percent chance of decreasing the target storm meter by five percent a lot of people had issues with him decreasing storm meter by five percent they wanted him to do more but i'll remind you that he also has a 50 percent chance of filling his own storm meter by five percent that's all almost 10 percent if you're reducing the storm meter and you're filling yours it's good there's a problem with this skill because it's a 50-50% chance. It shouldn't be so. It should be a 100% chance of decreasing the thumb meter by 5%. I will remind you that somebody like a Vizix does an A1 thumb meter decrease also. Twice, right? She decreases twice and there's no condition for her to land hers. You might say that's a void legendary, yes. So I guess they didn't want to put, her, put him on the same level with her. That's why they made him 50% chance of decreasing and 50% chance of gaining turn meter from this a1 skill of course it can be booked up to a 65 percent chance not even 75 percent chance well 65 percent chance of doing this um turn meter decrease in battles on a1 but it hits two times that means five percent five percent that's ten percent turn meter decrease ten percent turn meter gain yes it's not just one single hit turn meter decrease it's exactly like physics skill twice hits all right on the A2, personally, I say this skill is a good one. Forget the 50% chance or 65% chance, I say it's a good one. He's an HP based champion, also. That means this might do some damage. We don't know the multipliers yet. And um, on the A2, attacks all enemies, heals all allies by 10% of this champion's max HP. He's a healer. Attacks all enemies. Heals all allies by 10% of this champion's max HP. That's a lot of heal. So if you build him what with 90k HP, of course we can build champions up to 90k, 80k, 60k if you're a newer player. Even 100k HP, he will heal by 10%. That's 10,000 heal if you're 100k HP to your allies. That's a lot of heal, bro. Check out, it's even on a three turn cooldown. That means this dude is automatically a designated healer for your team. With him in the team, you don't need any other healers if this skill is on a three turn cooldown. And if you give him on a high speed or a set that makes him use this skill more often than usual. So that's a huge heal right here. I don't see what people are complaining about. You have a heal on a three turn cooldown. Well, 
heals all allies under continuous heal buffs by 15% instead. Yo! And it also provides this continuous heal. So if they do have continuous heal buff, he will boost that heal by 15%, not just 10%. So if your champion has 30k HP, 40k HP, and you're healed by 30%, I mean 15% and 10%, that's half your HP is full. 10k heals, 15k heals. Nobody builds up to 150k HP though. <laughs> but I'm saying maybe 8k heals, 9k heals, reasonably 4k heals, 5k heals are good in battles. And it has on a 3 ton cooldown, cooldown. So you have this available all the time. And since he's an HP based champion, we have no excuse. No excuse not to build this champion with highest HP you can get in your team. I'm thinking automatically immortal set. Immortal set or a shield set. So he will be a tank, healing, 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 and almost impossible to take down. Of course, you might want to sneak some defense in there. All right, on the A2, so far, so good. The A1 is okay. The A2 is good. Is it what a legendary champion's... Um, is this key what, what you put on a legendary champion? I'll say yes. Because I'm thinking of who else in the game does this amount of HP. I can only think of one other legendary that pairs with Corona. I'm trying to remember her name, but I can't. So she does that big 10k HP straight also. Alright. Removes all buffs. Um, I mean, remove all, removes all block buffs and heal reduction. Also, this is the skill that a lot of people have issues with. Because... You're removing block buffs and heal reduction when there is no, literally no enemy in the game that places block buffs on heal reduction on us. Except you're fighting some weird um, stage in the, um, what do you call it? If you're fighting some other weird stage in the dungeons where they place these two things. But hardly we come across enemies that place block buffs and heal reduction. Or heal reduction debuffs. Because he replaces them with two continuous heal buffs on all allies for two turns. Also has a 75% 75 chance of removing a random buff from all allies. So forget the first part of this skill. Just focus on this second part that says he has a 75% chance of removing one random debuff from you. This skill is also on a 3 turn cooldown. It doesn't hit. It just does it. So this... That, this person is, is not a damage dealer because he also has these two skills that hit. This one will just do the skill and place the continuous heal if he removes any of these two. So people say there might be a boss or somebody that will be placing block buffs and heal reduction. That's why this champion had to come first to prepare us for what is about to land. We don't know, but just it's good to have him. Champion that can do these two things, it's good to have him in your roster. You don't know what else Playroom is planning. They are known to bring in champions that will solve a problem. Or they don't create a problem first. Sometimes they do create a problem first before they bring the champion that solve it. But we've been seeing from what has been happening in case of Hex, in case of Hydra, in case of a lot of content, the champion comes first that will solve the problem before the boss that has that problem will be launched. So take that, note that there'll be a, there'll be a content in the game that requires you to, that will place block buffs on you and heal reduction. Okay. On the passive, each time a continuous heal buff heals an ally, fills that ally's stun meter by 5%. If there are multiple con multiple champions in the team with this skill, only one will activate. All right. So, if we have continuous heal, automatic 5% stun meter fill. This is not really a huge fill, but it will help you go further in the arena or in Doom Tower. It will make you take extra turns, I guess, faster. But we don't always have continuous heal on us because remember, for him to have continuous heal, he needs to first remove these two, <laughs> these two buffs. If he doesn't remove block buffs or heal reduction, your team will not have any continuous heal. Except you have another champion in your team who will place continuous heal. So he replaces continuous heal with these two um, debuffs on you. So don't rely on this passive. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't rely on turn meter heal of five percent. It's not worth worrying about. So, what is my rating for this champion? What do I think of him so far? The A1 is okay. The A2 is okay as a healer. 
is it the best healer that you want to bring into your battles all i can think of is apothecary who else does healing um what's her name now the, the same barbarian person what's her name seal the drake yeah doom priest rector Drat. all these names are calling we rely on their heels more than this new legendary champion so even if you get this champion and you do not have all these other names i called he will be your healer but if you have a sealed drake if you have a rector draft i guarantee you he will not make your draft for healers so he kind of is falling low in terms of the category of healers so it doesn't seem like a special type of healer that you need that is better than these all the ones that you already have so he will not be making my team if I do pull this champion or if whenever whenever I finally fuse him. So let me know what your personal thought about this guy is. If it's something that you'll be going for really hard, or if you think that since he's just a healer in and raid, you already have better healers that can do more than him, therefore there is no need for you to go for this fusion. Remember the A3 that there might be a boss that you need this on, but right now this will not work on any place because there is no block buffs or heal reduction on us. <laughs> there's only one or two places that i can think of that places heal reduction on us so that's the fusion plan make sure you follow it to the t and do all the events completely so you land with 75 um fragments and finally choose which one you want to push really really hard the summon rush for 20 if you have the, the shard saved up or the champion chase for 20 if you have the extra champions saved up to fuse or to you know get from your fragment place that you've been saving them from personally on my account without even trying i can easily complete that fragment fusion let me show you what i mean because i've been saving a lot of fragment fusion over here so i do have rorik right there i do have vlad rule so it's easy for me to complete the fragment fusion and get i mean easy for me to complete the um, champion chase and get all the required points i have a lot of epics to fuse and four legendaries to fuse that would give me enough points i need and then i also saved up enough mystery shards well this is not enough in case i wanted to just get the five fragments you know those five fragments from the um summon rush i could use this and some other maybe shards i buy from the market to complete the summon rush so if you've not been saving up your mystery shards they really help if you don't want to pull shards for summon rush because i'm guessing the summon rush will coincide with a 10x and i do not like pulling for a 10x so that's the fusion plan that's how i plan to go about it remember to save i don't have enough um resources saved up in terms of energy so i will be using my gems for this one each event will be using my gems so hopefully clan versus clan is starting tomorrow it will give us enough energy to give us enough resources that we need to at least advance this fusion a little bit that's what i plan with these events if it changes i'll update you guys and as i go along within the week i'll also post another update about how many fragments i've gotten so far and all that hit the like button if you've not done so already also check to make sure you've hit that subscribe button it shouldn't be red it should be grayed out and um, so you can expect more Rage Shadow Legends content from me. I'm Brix5D and I'll see you later for a Noob to Pro update later this evening.